Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We're God's Church of Love every Saturday. Listen, you guys, there are things going on in these last days. There are so many games and political ins and outs and weather anomalies and sins that go beyond one's imagination, insanity levels that are out as far as the ozone layer. There's just so much going on. And we have got to stay grounded. No matter what, our feet must stay planted on the ground. You cannot be driven about by every wind of doctrine. You cannot be driven about by any YouTube gossip. It ain't gospel is gossip. You can't be driven about by everything that's said on the news. You can't be driven about by every promise of the politic, the politicians. You can't be driven about by this church, that church, or the other church. Everybody quacks, everybody waddles, but everybody ain't in God. Everybody's not about truth. Everybody's not real. So we have to depend on God. Let's move to, I want you to go with me to James chapter 1. We're going to start with that one. James chapter 1, <clears throat> all right, James chapter 1, I'm going to start reading at verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that God giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. For those of you who don't know what abradeth means, it means he gives it to you freely, but he's not fussing at you while he's doing it. Let me make an example. You know how parents... They'll say, okay, I'm going to give you this. This is the last time I'm going to do it because you're so disobedient, hardhead. I don't want to hear blah, blah, blah. You better not break it, blah, blah, blah. If you do this or do that, that's upbraiding. That's fussing. That's <laughs> Anyway, so that, that's what he's saying, that God will bless us. He will, he will give us what we need freely without uh, reaming us up and down without bawling us out while he's doing it, the way humans do. All right, so six, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Here we go. This is a perfect way of saying wavering. This is a silly example. I love musicals, so I always refer to, you know, songs or, you know, plays or whatever. There's a, a musical where they do this thing. Well, it's not a musical. I'll take that back. It's a little it's a little kitty thing that we learn when we get a little boyfriend or a little girlfriend. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me. You go on and on plucking those little uh 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 petals from the flower. And then wherever it ends, it, either he, he loves me or he loves me not, <laughs> like a crapshoot. But the issue is we treat God that way. One day, God loves me. God is good. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. And we have all these little church religious cliches. <laughs> I'm sure they make him want to gag at times. But anyway, but we're good at dishing out the mess. We're good at, at dishing out the verbiage. But we're not always good at living up to what we're dishing out. So, you know, I put a plate, I fill a plate up with food, and you sit at the table. And I sit at my side, you sit on your side. We both have our plate full of food sitting in front of us. But we're so busy talking, we don't ever eat the food. The food gets cold and we end up putting it away or heating it up for later. So there are times when you're so busy talking, you're not getting from God what he wants you to get. You're not getting the nutrition 
the strength, the inner strength, the joy, the peace. You're not getting that groundedness that settles your nerves that you need and you can only get from God and his word. You can only get that through the power of his Holy Spirit by faith. But you're so busy running your mouth. This went wrong. That went wrong. They did me wrong. They did me. I mean, everything is like up in arms and everything's a big deal and everything is, is frustrating and annoying and aggravating and you're running around getting mad at this one, getting mad at that one. And what does God say? Forsake wrath. But what you're doing is stimulating your memory on all the negatives that all you do is think of wrath. You can't think, you can't forget any wrath because you're so steeped in it. You're, you're, <laughs> you're stirring the pot emotionally speaking by constantly repeating and rehashing everything and everyone that has crossed your grain. So instead of focusing on God, instead of focusing on his ability and desire to bless you, your focus keeps your nerves frayed. Your focus keeps your keeps you at your wit's end. Your focus keeps you trembling, full of anxiety, having sleepless nights and cold sweats, nightmares coming and going. And you're popping pills thinking that that's going to calm you down. When all you need is the peace of God that does not cost a dime. Doesn't even cost a penny. Because it's freely given. All right, let me keep reading here. Mm, mm, mm. Like I said, he gives freely and upbraideth not. All right, six. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. I'm not going to read any further. Let's stop at verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all ways his ways. My question to you is, are you grounded? Are you single-minded? Will God, with your cooperation, be able to strengthen, strengthen and settle you? Strengthen, settle and establish you? Or are you going to spend your days and your energy chasing your tail putting out all the fires yourself, running over here, putting that fire. You got a bucket of water running over there. You're chasing the little fire flames that pop up here, there, there, instead of saying, Lord, would you send a nice good rain and put all this mess out for me? No, no, you're reactionary. You got to do this. You got to handle that. You got to run, do that. God might be telling you, sit on your fanny and rest. Enter into his rest. Do you know what that really means? It means that you're entering into your faith in God. You're leaning on him. You're trusting on him. So what you do, you're trusting in him. So what you do is you sit, you take an extra minute that you can't even afford to take, and you pray for him to extend time so you can pour your heart out to him and put the day and your whole situation in his hands. And then you're not rushing down the street, almost tailgating and crashing into people's cars. You're not almost running people over, trying to get b before the light turns red, almost causing accidents because you're in such a hurry because you got to get this done. No, you're resting in him to resolve the problem. Whether you get there or not, you trust that God will work out the details. Problem with most of us is there's very little trust in God because we live in a microwave society. We live in a cell phone society. We live in push button, voice activated, 
uh, <laughs> uh, clap your hand, whatever it is, everything happens instantly. If it takes a minute too long, we don't want to be bothered. I heard somebody talk uh, a couple of weeks ago saying that uh, they were very happy with the new form of ebooks because they don't like having to scroll. You scroll up, you scroll down, not a big deal. But they don't even want to take a minute to do that because we are so spoiled with instantaneous living that we don't have the time to take our time. Everything doesn't have to be rush, rush, hurry over here, hurry over there. But that's the way we have been programmed. All right, so let's move on. Two, and what ends up happening when you're programmed like that, you're so busy jumping to the beat that you don't even take the time to get instruction from God. And then when things start to falter, you get mad at God because why couldn't he have helped me with this? Well, did you sit down and take the time? Or did you jump up and handle it yourself? Because you don't even have time to pray. Hmm. All right. We're going to Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 8, starting at verse 9, excuse me. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter. Now, doesn't that sound like an oxymoron? Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. So you got to work at it. You got to work at getting your rest. Isn't that funny? But that's what it says. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Listen, listen, listen. <clears throat> Some of you, you have your own businesses, ministries, schools, merchants, uh, overseas, what do you call it? import, export. You have all these different things going on. Some of you have three, four, five things. You're doing import, export. You're doing real estate locally right? You're tutoring in your neighborhood and you're traveling to do ministry or you're traveling to do all types of business negotiations to build up your corporate structure. Well, what I want to say to you is why don't you shave off some of that? Because the only thing that's going to keep you running, chasing over here, chasing over there, ch running over there, running up here, running down there, going backwards, going forwards, going sideways, going, and next thing, you put your right foot out, you put your left foot in, and, da -da 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 -da, and you turn it all about, you do the hokey pokey, and you turn yourself around, that's what it's all about, and you're living your life that way. You're living your life that way. You're hokey pokey in your way to nowhere, trying to get everything done. You got 10 million projects going on. And just like the old adage goes, jack of all trades, but master of none. Master one, at least get one mastered. Do one well and see it to completion. Don't do a little bit of everything and nothing gets finished. Don't do that. 
Don't be the tumbleweed when the wind blows south and you're sitting there on the north end of the street and it starts blowing you and you're rolling around, bouncing and bumping into this, bumping into that. You have no destination, but you're moving. You're moving fast because that wind is blowing. It's pushing you. Some of you are pushed by a force, an invisible force called <clears throat> pride. Some of you are pushed by a force called ambition. Some of you are pushed by a force called greed. Whatever the force is, it ain't God. <laughs> so you are allowing yourself like a tumbleweed to be tossed over here, tossed over there at, at, with every wind of doctrine. You hear something good over here, you get into this business venture. You hear something over here, you're gambling on that. You hear that, you go, you decide you're going to invest. Oh, that's going to be a good business deal. You know what? Sit your happy hips down. First, or let me say it the way the Bible says it, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all those other things, that God allows will be added unto you. But you don't need everything all at once. You're not good at juggling. So why do you keep doing it? Things get dropped. People get hurt. Things get cheated. People get cheated. People get done wrong. Why? You meant to do well, but oh, whoops. Oh, well, no. That's not glorifying God. And it doesn't make you look good either. So you have to stop. Take a minute to get your equilibrium. Take a minute to get your bearings. Spend time with God. Seek him for his wisdom. Seek him for his correction. Seek him for his guidance. Seek him for, seek him for wisdom and instruction. Because if you go God's way, you're going to prosper. He'll, he will prosper your way. But if you jump around like a chicken with your head cut off, running over here, running over there, dashing here, dashing there, being pushed over yonder, being pushed south, pushed west, pushed north, you don't know where you're going. You, there's nothing that's going to be completed. But you're happy because you made some accomplishments along the way. But look at how much further you could have gone had you stayed focused. Everybody cannot do 10 things at one time. And you have to ask yourself, you know where he says he, uh, he knows the joints and marrows, the intents of your heart. Why are you doing all this? Sometimes you have to be still. Remember that he is God, not you. Sit your fanny down and say, Lord, examine my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. Are my motives pure? Or am I trying to make a name for myself? Honey, am I out there trying to make that almighty dollar so I can shine and bring all people to me? Because I'm Mr. and Mrs. Wonderful, whichever you are. You know, you have to really seek God. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Are you really trying to do those kids good? Are you really trying to help that orphanage? Are you really into being a philanthropist, helping all these charities? Why are you really doing what you do? Hmm, are you making sure that you let people know what you did, what you gave, where you went, how much you gave them, how much you did for them? Hmm? And what does that do for you? Why must you tell a human being what you do in ministry? Unless you need a little, oh, you're so wonderful. Hmm. 
You know, I was thinking last night, I was talk, kind of talking to the Lord. I have these weird conversations. And I was saying, you know, Lord, sometimes I wonder, when I look at your people doing things for so many people, doing so many things with only one body to do it with, sometimes I wonder, while people seem to be burning the candle at both ends, while people seem to be wearing 10 hats all at once, I wonder what is the innermost need? Are they obligating people to be there for, what, for that moment when they need them? Is that their way of keeping people indebted to them? Like indentured slavery? Why do people do what they do? Why do people do the good that they do? What is the real reason? Is it because, okay, let's let's make it personal. Let me talk from a first person standpoint. Uh, I'll do a little role play. Well, now let's see. I might be insecure. I might have a low self-esteem. I might not think that much of myself. So the way to make up for that, I know what I'll do. I'll let everybody know how wonderful I am. I'll do this for Brother Appleseed. And then I'll go over there and I'll give uh, $1,000 or $2,000 to that church over there. And I'll make up, I, I'll make sure I stand in line when they call for the thousand dollar givers. So everybody will see I'm one of them. I'm a big giver. See how generous I am? Ain't I Mrs. Nice Guy? Yeah. See, sometimes what God looks at when we do what we do, so uh, air quote, in the name of God, is Sometimes he sees it as an abomination because he knows why we're really doing it. He knows that one day you're going to remind somebody of all you did for them. And you're going to let them know what a monster they are for not coming to your rescue. Even though, check it out, even though God's word says when you do for somebody, Number one, don't sound a trumpet and let everybody know what you did. Number two, the other thing you don't do is wait for them to return the favor. Because if you really did it from your heart, you're done. You're excited because it blessed them. You're not writing on the list. Okay, I did that for her. I did that for him. I did that for him. Okay, so let me write their names down so I know who to go to when I'm when I need some help, they better come through for me after all I did for them. Hmm. Think about that. So our subtleties, sometimes what we do is not always for the right reason or for honorable reasons. Another thing we have to make sure we're careful of. Whew. Another thing we have to make sure we're careful of is that we, when we trust God in these weird situations where we're not really sure what to do, sometimes we want to run to Sue, Sally, Paul, Frank, Johnny, Timmy. We want to go to all these different people because we want people to come to our rescue. We want people to lend their ears so we can burn it with our fumes. We want an audience to hear our woes. We want pity. We want sympathy. And hopefully it will end up in cha-ching. You see what I'm saying? Because some of us are manipulative and we don't know it. We think we are holier than thou. We think we're as righteous as, as Jesus. But when we do see a fault in ourselves, we're like that man that looks in the mirror and says, like the fawns, he looks in the mirror to make an adjustment with his hair 
And he leans back like, oh, there's nothing to improve here. Let me move on. And that's the way many of you see your walk with the Lord. You see yourselves as there's nothing to fix here. I'm good with God. God's good with me. We're in like Flynn. Show you right. And you don't do anything. You point out everybody else's faults, but here's the comical part. Have you ever heard yourself point out someone else's fault? Have you ever had a moment where God mirrored what you were saying and you actually remembered that you did the exact same thing or you still do the exact same thing? You're pointing the finger at them for being wrong at and you're just as wrong, but you're telling other people what they did wrong. And they're looking at you like, but baby, you do the same thing. So why are you fussing? We do that all the time, y'all. See, when we go through, the thing that shows who you really are is not only what you do in private when nobody's looking. What do you do under pressure? How do you act when the vicissitudes start to hit you like white on rice? The fan is blowing and it's all hitting the fan. And you're at your wit's end. What do you do? What's your attitude like? How's your disposition? How do you treat other people around you when you're going through? Hmm. Do you cut them off at the knees, walk out the door, and write them, scratch them off your list? How do you handle your vicissitudes? Because, see, when tribulation comes, it's supposed to work patience. Patience, experience, and experience is supposed to bring hope. But some of you, you get worse and worse. You go down this rabbit trail, and before you know it, you are a runaway train. Like just in a second, you're going to crash. It's, it's an accident waiting to happen. Or you are a time bomb ticking away getting ready to explode at any given moment because you're so far under pressure, you forgot to go to your vow, God, and ask him to relieve your pressure so that you could enter into his rest and have peace in the middle of a storm. You could have that peace that passes all understanding. How? When you keep your mind stayed on him. When you lean on him. For all that you're not good at and what you are good at, you need more help more than what you're good at. So you go to the solver of your problems, the lifter up of your head. He that strengthens you on the inner man, the one with all the answers who goes ahead of you and guards your rear, guards your back. But no, you got this, don't you? How's it working out for you?